Okay. Now I know uh, why the rest of you are hanging around because you want to learn all you can about the 4250. And in this regard, we want to talk about the, um, we want to talk about setting static IP addresses in the DHCP reservation list. So let's get on back there. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to log into the main UI login. Uh, you may say, what? What is this? Well, this is what every Netgear network admin has uh, looked at for the past 30 years. Uh, is this interface? <laughs> it's not pretty like the other one is, but it gets the job done. The username and password are the same that you set for the previous, um, for the other interface. But the place that you do that, uh, you know, so you go to this web UI and then you click on main UI and then it'll take you here. And in we go to the uh, to the switch. Now, we've got our profile already set up, right? And so that's good. We need, we need that set up in order to do this next part. So the profile is all good to go. Now we need to uh, just double check a couple of things. The first thing we need to go is click on system and then click on services. And here we need to make sure that uh, admin mode is enabled. If it's not, you need to hit enable, hit apply, and let the thing reboot. Okay, so admin mode on DHCP server configuration needs to be enabled. Now we need to go to pool configurations. And here is where we are going to set up our, um, our static IP addresses for inside the DHCP reservation list. Uh, the, we, we need to find out, uh, the, one of the first things we need to do is we need to find out what, uh, Mac addresses are on this guy. And so we're going to go to address table and I'm going to look at ports one and two. So here is port one. Okay. Uh, and here is port two. Okay. So we need to remember these. So I'm just going to open like a notepad or something and copy these in. So, uh, Let's control, whoops, a daisy. So we need to remember these two um, MAC addresses. You can also find them on the devices. There's on stickers and stuff. They will show you what the MAC addresses are if you want to like verify this. But let's just open Notepad and we're just going to, ah, we're just going to open Notepad and copy these in here so that we have them available. Because this is how you marry those uh, MAC addresses to IP addresses. So, uh, the way you find that is by clicking on switching and address table, click on address table and look for ones that say the actual, uh, like the port number is two and one, and they should say learned. Okay. So these are, these have been issued and the switch has learned, uh, the actual routing address tables have learned what the uh, Mac addresses are. Okay. So back to system, back to services and, uh, DHCP pool configurations. Okay. And we have to do these individually. And at the very end of our setup, so that's super important, we are not going to make changes to our network after we do DHCP reservations. Now, I've been told that this is changing, and I've been told DHCP reservations will be getting uh, an integration with the user interface side that we were just in earlier. But this is how you currently do it. Now, you cannot change this you cannot change make changes on the other side of this switch after this is done or these will all disappear okay like you can't delete the profile for example or they'll all disappear and you have to do it all over again so this should be the last thing you do in your network design if you want to assign ip addresses to specific devices all right so uh here we go so we're going to create a new pool name and the pool is actually we are going to all we're going to allocate a license to a specific device. And so we're going to create a pool and the pool is going to have one address in it. All right. And the pool name is going to be called studio. Let's say studio one. That's fine. Looks like I've already tried this once. And we're going to say that we want to create a manual binding type. All right. Now uh, the client name should be whatever you want. In this case, we're going to call this studio or DHCP client or whatever. And we're going to put the hardware address in here. Now this is the 80 is the studio one. So we're going to do that. And it's an Ethernet connection. All right. So we want to put in the, the MAC address of that. Now under the client ID, we want to type in 01 and then the MAC address again. So it should look like this. Okay. 01 and then the MAC address. So it should have the MAC address. It should also have that little semicolon in there. 
Then we want to say host number. This is the IP address that we want to elect for this uh, for this device. So we're going to say 192.168.85. Now we're going to pick one that we we haven't used yet, right? So let's say 21. So we know that that is if if my studio gets that device, we know that the reservation is working. So 85.21. The mask, of course, triple two five five. And then uh, nothing needs to go in the prefix link, uh, length. You you can use this instead of um, the host number, but this is for pool creation, not for assigning IP addresses. So just leave that as is. Lease time, uh, we can make this just one day, although this will probably never change, but one day is fine. And then that is it. That's the whole setup. We're going to say add. And now we have a studio pool. Now we're also going to change and we're going to create another one that's called the P100, right? And we're going to do the exact same thing so you can see this done again. Uh, and remembered all of this. So now this is P100. Whoops, that's not P100. P100. Uh, we need to change this. So let's go back to our notepad. This is the P100, right? Chow. Address, Ethernet. We need to say 01, boom, like that. We're going to change this now to something like 22 triple two five five duration one day and we're going to say add okay now this is this is done as far as i'm concerned i always like to hit this little save button because you never know configuration has been saved i don't know what's why when that's required or not but at least it's saved okay so now we are going to go back to this view first of all and we're going to reboot my camera and my in my studio. So how do you reboot your camera in studio? Pull the power. Okay, so we're going to take the power out and then plug this back in. And up she goes. And startup has begun. And now we're going to reboot the camera as well. So she's going to do the dance. And let's make sure before we leave this screen the switch is now issuing. It's the the IP that we've specified. All right. Let's watch that studio. Make sure that it goes. Boy, this is dramatic. 192.168.85.21. So we have confirmed that our DHCP reservation is now working. So I'm going to sign out of this web UI. We're going to jump back now into the previous one. And how do we do that? Well, we have to wipe this and go back to this screen. Put in our super secret password. I'm sorry. And go back to our web UI here. So I logged out of that switch. I'm sorry I didn't show you that. Logged out of the switch. Went back to the IP address of my web UI. It refreshed the page. It took me to the login for this screen. And here we are. So now we're going to look at ports one and two. And here now we have 85.22. That's the P100. And we have 85.21. That's my studio. So DHCP reservations. Now, I can't do anything now with this switch because I've been informed that if you change anything here, it wipes all of your reservations back there. So the reservation thing is the last thing that you can, can do. You can't make any more changes to this switch. So it needs to be done. Everything needs to be set on this side. And then you do the DHCP reservations. But that's how it's done. And you saw it here first, folks, how to actually do that. So I know people have been asking for that tutorial. And that, as of today, is how that's done. So we will, uh, hopefully, you find that, that useful. Remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handsome.